I was motivated to work in maternal and reproductive health as a result of a personal experience I had when I was in my early 20s. I was visiting a family in rural Malawi and there was great sadness in the household because two of the five children had been stillborn. When I spoke to the mother, she told me that she really didn't want a large family and she was not much older than myself at that stage. When I realised that these deaths could have easily been prevented and that this woman had little access to antenatal care or even family planning services, I was pretty much motivated to work in public health. The research I've been involved in has uh, led to practical recommendations and policy options to better prepare local and international organisations to deliver sexual and reproductive health services in humanitarian crises. And so these crises include things like wars, uh, whether epidemics, natural disasters, and also complex emergencies where there's internal conflict and mass displacements of populations, um, and uh, famine or food shortages, and also where there is fragile or failing health, political and economic kind of systems. So at the Australian level, I've been involved in impact evaluations of taxpayer funded projects and advised the Australian government on investment in this area. Internationally, these programs have led to significant change. So for example, there's been 23 policy changes across a number of poor countries where sexual and reproductive health has been integrated into the disaster management and response policies of those countries alongside water, um, sanitation and food. This is really important because what it's done is prioritise sexual and reproductive health. The evaluations that I've been involved in um, have really uh, contributed to, the, to trained personnel in the space. So there's been over 4,000 national coordinators trained across the world to respond in crisis settings. So in 2015, in Nepal, for example, these trained people delivered care and services to over 20,000 people across the country. And this includes things like caring for pregnant women and their newborns, delivering contraception, uh, preventing gender-based violence and assisting those who are affected by that, and also preventing HIV transmission. I think it's really important to be strategic about this from the start and think about impact early on. This means that you'll need to work with a range of people to help create an environment for change. So for example, the research needs to be um, not only involve a team with academic researchers, but health professionals, uh, consumers, cons community people, and um, decision makers across a number of sectors and at a number of levels. So, for example, the work that we did in Sri Lanka um, on, uh, that examined adolescent sexual reproductive health highlighted some real gaps in education and information needs of um, adolescents. So our team comprised of um, academics and health professionals um, working in the district, um, as well as teachers. But we also had an advisory panel where we strategically invited key decision makers from the provincial and national education and health ministries. So that meant that they were across the findings from the start and that they could advocate for change uh, when they actually return to, to make decisions about policy. So we were fortunate to create a bit of a groundswell that resulted in the development of a quite unique module for training, bringing community midwives and teachers together in their um, pre-service training. This has led to the implementation of the first training module for community midwives and teachers in their pre-basic um, uh, education. 
and has resulted um, in a um, policy change which has brought the health and education department closer in terms of training of teachers and primary health care workers.